Hello, my name is Marina Vivarelli. I'm a pediatric nephrologist working at a hospital called Bambino Gesù Children's Hospital in Rome in Italy. And um, I was a co-chair of the Controversies and Compliment meeting. And I also have been a participant in the guideline on glomerular diseases, both for KDGO. So right now, I'm at the um, 61st ERA Congress in Stockholm. C3 glomerulopathy is a glomerular disease that uh, is in the realm of the ultra-rare diseases. It affects both children and adults. And at the moment, it doesn't have a known um, efficacious treatment, and it has a pretty dire prognosis. So it represents a so-called unmet clinical need. And um, the exciting thing is that right now, there are starting to be positive results from um, different studies looking at complement inhibitors. A lot of exciting evidence was presented at this meeting concerning this disease in terms of results of trials. In particular, for um, the results were presented for an agent called iptacopan, which is a factor B inhibitor. And this factor B inhibitor is in a phase three trial. And the phase three results at six months were presented. Um, at six months, Iptacopan met its primary endpoint in terms of proteinuria reduction. This had already been announced at the ASN, but the results were shown more in detail at this meeting. And what the results show are that not only was the proteinuria reduction primary endpoint met, but also Iptacopan uh, determined a stabilization in terms of EGFR compared to the slope of the two previous years uh, for each patient that was enrolled in the study. The study also showed an improvement in terms of circulating C3 levels in this patient population. So very exciting data. Another agent that has been investigated in C3 glomerulopathy with results being presented at this meeting is pegcetacoplan. Pegcetacoplan is an agent that blocks directly C3. And the results of the NOBLE study, which is a phase two study, um, were presented more in detail in two parts. First, the 12-week results were shown, and these 12-week results are mainly describing the kidney biopsy aspects. And they are very exciting because they show that as early as 12 weeks, pegcetacoplan is able to give a significant reduction in terms of C3 deposits in the kidney biopsy, the intensity of these going down to zero in some of these patients. And this corresponds also to a significant reduction in the electron-dense deposits in the kidney biopsy and in a reduction in the activity index, so a score that is given to the inflammation of these patients in their kidney biopsies. The second um, study that was presented were the 52 weeks results for the same study in a slightly smaller patient cohort. There are about nine patients. And what was seen in this study was that this improvement that was seen at 12 weeks is sustained at 52 weeks with the vast majority of patients going down to a zero score of C3 staining by immunofluorescence with significant reduction in the electron dense deposits in the activity index and in the foot process effacement. So this really shows that the complement inhibitor is able to act within the biopsy, within the kidney, to improve the lesions at the heart of the disease, which is really exciting. The other really exciting news that emerged at the ERA, because the acceptance of the paper arrived in these days, is the fact that the KDGO Controversies paper looking at complement in different kidney diseases has now been accepted for publication. So we, accept, we expect this paper to be published quite soon in Kidney International, and I think this will be a wonderful way for all the different stakeholders involved in um, looking at complement in kidney diseases to be up to speed with the potential um, role of complement in many different kidney diseases and glomerular diseases. And there's so much action. There's so many potential new agents that are, um, you know, ready to be assessed in the clinical arena. And there's so much positive um, information coming out from the agents that are being assessed right now. So I really think that moving forward in the next couple of years, we're going to be able to have an armamentarium of different inhibitors that we can use in a more informed fashion to treat all these different conditions, many of which now don't have uh, effective therapeutic agents to use. So I really think that um, this um, meeting has really highlighted how um, rich and uh, potentially um, fruitful this moment is for whoever's interested in treating glomerular diseases and using complement inhibition.